Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. For those of you who joined us last night, you remember that Gordon had his uh, cowbell, and unfortunately, I didn't bring it with me. Um, I, I still quite uh, can't quite believe that I used a cowbell to uh, to convene a session at a conference. That's a first. <clears throat> well, before we begin the uh, the formal wrap up of our session, we have very graciously um, uh, Edgar Rusa has very graciously agreed to perform a. Uh, a song, uh, a composition uh, of his own preparation for us. So um, to send us out on a musical note, Mr. Rusa, the stage is yours. I wrote these uh, uh, words to the tune Red River Valley, and uh, the last two verses uh, were added by Ann Kaler. How I wish that I could have met her, the great author of many a young. place called Green Hills Farm. She was born in Hillsboro, West Virginia. Pearl Comfort Sight and Stricker name. Absalom A child in China who asks many questions. Her blue eyes were a sight to behold. Before she learned English lessons, she knew how to speak Chinese code. Before it 
came undone and unstuck What was in agricultural mission Farming was his expertise A new baby was born to be And sweat had poured from her hands. Miss Buck realized she could not reach her. But with music, Carol took her stand. One hundred twenty four years ago. West Virginia Four decades before she wrote The Good Earth She's the reason we have all met here The author of many a young in the hills of old West Virginia. We meet together with voices loud and strong to celebrate the life, the books, and legacy of Pearl, the honored subject of this song. I'm not even going to try <laughs> to, to follow that. Edgar, that was beautiful. Thank you very much. In a conference full of highlights, that definitely takes the cake. Um, and a perfect way to summarize so many of the things we've talked about over the course of the last two and a half days. So thank you very much for that. Um, well, just a couple of, of housekeeping details before we wrap up. Um, uh, first of all, on your way out today, uh, please be sure to pick up two parting gifts. Um, one is a signed um, and numbered um, perspective of the birthplace uh, by the artist Troy Earhart. Uh, we have those at the desk where you registered and uh, at the front of the building. Um, copy for everyone. And then also, um, the transcript of Pearl's comments at Pearl S. Buck Day at the College of West Virginia in Beckley in 1970. Um, Kirk and I were reading this the other day, and there are some really great lines in her comments, particularly about her sense of attachment and roots to West Virginia. So please be sure to pick up a copy of both of these things as you leave today. Uh, for our colleagues who left early, we'll mail those and make sure they have them. But just two more ways uh, to remember our time together. I'm sorry? Still have lots of posters in there. Oh, yes, absolutely, posters. Um, in fact, bookmarks, posters, you know, please, as you're, uh, yes. Um, um, on your way out, please be sure to, uh, 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 to visit all of those displays one last time and pick up mementos to take home. 
Yes, ma'am. I know at least one person in this room has been with Cobra. And I wonder if there are other instances where people who have been with her That's a wonderful question. Yes? I wasn't really with her. When I first started teaching, this would be maybe in 66, the school where I was working was maybe five miles from Green Hill Farm. So I invited her to come speak at the school. And um, I was like 22. I mean, I didn't know anything. anything. We had no, we kind of knew, but we had no idea. I mean, I think she was a writer. And it was a little country school. We were totally kind of unprepared. And she just had such class, you know. <laughs> and, um, but she was very, very gracious. And I remember saying to her that my husband um, didn't like for me to read her books because I, was all, I would always end up crying. <laughs> and she thought, well, that's it. She rolled towards me. I was so um, that was just, you know. Uh, and the chair she sat in up on the stage is now in my bedroom. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Yes. Uh, I'm Ann Taylor, and this hand touched Pearl Buck. <laughs> I was 17 years old. And in an amateur play group, I was still in high school, of course, and we put on Noel Coward's Hay Fever, and I played the first and last ingenue I've ever played. <laughs> and it was in the local high school, uh, crowded. It was for a benefit for the first welcome house in Landfell, Pennsylvania, the second welcome house. There was a family. The Yoder family, of course, had adopted up in Perkesy or Dublin, uh, Pennsylvania, but there was a, a very well-known family in Lansdale who had adopted several of the children. And I was in the performance and did as well as one does, and my mother was lurking in the lobby, as mothers do, <laughs> smoking a cigarette trying to overhear what people were saying about her daughter on stage. And she heard, I, I saw Pearl after the show, and I remember the white hair, I remember the blue eyes, I remember seeing the thousand yard stare that the Marines speak of. She was there, but she wasn't there. She was so private, so, internally concerned that she pervaded the atmosphere of the small group in the lobby uh, with her stare, very polite, very soft, high voice. But my mother lurking around overheard her husband say, that ingenue, she's going to be something. <laughs> well, I'm from Lansing, Pennsylvania, to West Virginia in Pearl's honor, so I guess I've made it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I suppose I should oh. say that I did spend two days with Pearl Bell. Uh, in 1971, I was a writer for the Gazette in Charleston. And for some reason, I got a call inviting me to be a part of a seminar being held at Hillsborough. And there would be a panel. There were two women on the panel. Pearl Buck was one, and I was the other. <laughs> and so we sat side by side. And um, the, the title of the seminar was Quality of Life. And we spoke about different things you know, that makes your life better and all that sort of thing. But um, that evening, it was her birthday, and that evening we celebrated her birthday in the basement of a church, and the Greenbrier sent down a birthday cake, and I sat with her throughout that time. She told me a funny story about her son, you know, how the quality of life has to do with order in your life, and she told me how messy her son was, <laughs> and uh, that when he got married, she felt 
just terrible because his wife would be picking up after him all the time. And after they'd been married a short time, she talked to her daughter-in-law and said, you know, I'm really sorry. And she said, oh, he's the neatest man, neatest person I've ever known. And so Pearl Duck said, I recommend that sons get married. <laughs> <laughs> and the other, one other thing, she had just written the story Bible. And she gave me a copy. At that time, my daughter was not quite two years old. And she wrote on it, uh, to Laura, with every good wish for growing and signing it. That was my experience. Thank you, Connie. Thank you. <laughs> yes, ma'am. If, you, if you'd like to use the microphone. My story is a little bit different because she, to this day, didn't know me from Adam, but I was one of the neighborhood kids. And so um, as a junior high kid, high school kid, I can't tell you the number of pajama parties we went to in her barn. And the nice thing was, all you had to do was go to the farmhouse and say, may I have, may I have any, uh, a bunch of girls at the barn and she would say sure and she never took your name she never had your parents sign she could see you know with the neighborhood kids and, and we also had New Year's parties there we after football games we go there my husband used to play basketball there and my younger my younger son <laughs> my younger brother used to have um, cup stats there <laughs> so she really was very open uh, to, to the neighborhood. Thank you. <laughs> yes, ma'am. My name is Lauren Lomax, and my parents bought the property. Oops, she originally bought the property for a brother, I think. Um, my parents bought it from her in the early 70s. Can I speak loud? Or I, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I have a very soft voice. <laughs> No, that's, so my parents bought the property uh, from Grobach that we live in. My mother still lives there, right next door. Um, we grew up next door in the early 70s. Um, I remember invited to her 80th birthday, which I went to. And what I do remember is she had on a white Chinese robe. Um, she bent down to speak to us, to the children. She was very kind. Um, I noticed her makeup with her eyeliner was little crooked. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's my, and now I work for Grandma International, and I live two doors away. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. This is stretching a little bit, but going back to 1909, 1910, I don't know which year, Pearl was visiting in Hillsboro those years. She also visited her relatives that lived in Greenbar County. And my dad remembered uh, being there at the neighbor's house, farmhouse. Uh, this was Pearl's aunt and uncle's house. And the kids, the neighborhood kids were there. And at that point, her claim to fame was having lived in China. Okay? So they played school, as kids typically do, in the barn and she taught them some Chinese characters. And my dad remembered that throughout his life, that experience with her. Yes, ma'am. I'm from Hillsboro. I uh, grew up in that area. And I have memories of Pearl Buck I never really knew her. My father was the principal of the local elementary school and high school, and so I'm thinking uh, that through him I met her at events, perhaps. Uh, she's in my memory because she looks so much like my grandmother that I always thought of her as a, a, an alternate famous grandmother. But I, I now know the year, I think, uh, from being here that she visited and uh, there was a, a lodge in Minnehaha Springs, a gorgeous lodge, uh, and they did a special event for her at the lodge and it was going, it was going to be dinner and they asked me to serve her at this dinner and I think it was the 1963 visit now from being here. Well, of course, I was very 
very nervous uh, about serving cold duck dinner. And I had never served anybody normally, and I have a lot of sympathy for people who serve me now uh, because of that one event. And I remember that I apologized to her at least twice <laughs> for what I was doing in the service, and, and she was so gracious and so kind and soft-spoken. And um, like the lady who has been mentioned here, who looked at her varicose veins, <laughs> I did too with that event. <laughs> and I remember her in her such a nice blue, dark blue navy suit, and that she spoke at that event, and then we went downstairs. She probably thought of Pocahontas County as the place that always served her food in the basement. <laughs> but also we went to the basement for dinner. But what a gracious and kind person she was. Thank you. BJ? So I have to do the picnic story really quick to follow up on Grace Jane because we always fed her. And I do remember the Allegheny Mountain Lodge. But at one point she was there, and I think it was 1970, and my mother had been on the uh, West Virginia Centennial Commission when she was there the first time. So for whatever reason, on that Sunday afternoon, my mother, unbeknownst to anybody in our household, had invited her to our house in Marlington for a cookout. And I remember my dad getting the grill ready. It was just my mom, my dad, my sister, my brother, and me. And all, and they drove her around in this big the chauffeur with the black, big black car, the limo. And it pulled up on 2nd Avenue in Marlington. There were no other cars in town on Sunday afternoon. And she just got out and just walked through the gate and walked to the backyard. And she had on the big hat and the purse and the gloves. And, sat down at the picnic table. I remember we had ribeye steaks, and I remember 24-hour salad, and that was a big deal when that happened. Somebody important was there. We ate, we visited, and then the chauffeur pulled up, and she just walked to the front of the house and got in the car and left, and I'm thinking, that's kind of cool. <laughs> Anyone else like to share any personal memories about Pearl? I can't imagine a better way to conclude a conference where we've talked about the larger than life figure of Pearl S. Buck and now to get these personal reminiscences that make her so real and so human and so, uh, so very much like one of us. I could not imagine a better ending. Yes, John. Maybe since we've heard from everybody in the middle, perhaps it's a good idea to talk about the people who benefited from Welcome House. And I have two granddaughters. Ah. And I was hoping at the end of my presentation to show you the picture. Uh, they're now 16 and 18. And my family is incredibly blessed by these two little girls. I suppose. And, so, so, uh, and I remember I interviewed Peter Kahn, and he also has a child. So I think we do miss him remember what she's given us. I don't know how many thousands of children she was involved in the rest <laughs> Would anyone else like to add any personal observations or recollections? Well, if not, don't worry. We're going to get together again, and you'll have the chance to, um, uh, to think about your stories and your observations and uh, get them ready for, for our next gathering. Um, well, let me uh, conclude then formally by, uh, first of all, thanking our partners, uh, Janet and our friends at PSBI, um, Ken, the Western Humanities Council, uh, thanks to you and Mark uh, for all that you did to make this happen, Brett uh, and all of our friends at Western New Wesleyan, uh, of course, BJ, Kirk, all of our friends at the Birthplace in Hillsborough, John and your team at the libraries. Uh, this really, I think, reflects a genuine team effort on the part of many good people and many good partners, a lot of hard work, and we're just thrilled that it's all come together and that we're together again, uh, or together for the first time, and that we will be together again soon. Let me also, one more time, thank Lisa Martin, uh, who's in the back of the room.
and Amy Garbrook, who is here in the front. As you all have, have come to, to know, uh, this would not uh, be possible uh, without either of them. So I thank them both very much for everything they've done and, uh, uh, and will continue to do. So thank you both, Lisa and Amy, very much. And finally, I'm reminded, uh, especially as everyone was talking and offering personal reminiscences, um, I'm reminded of the, and I'm not sure it was Churchill who said it first, but it's the person uh, who said it I, I'm most familiar with, um, where he said, this is not the end, uh, and this is not the beginning of the end, but it is the end of the beginning. <laughs> and so uh, we've spent these uh, two and a half days here together, and it's the end of that phase of this relationship and the partnership and our activities together, but it certainly is not the end of, uh, of all of what we have to do together. So please stay in touch, please stay in tuned. We will be in touch with you over the course of the next few weeks to share additional information and summaries of the conference, information, um, and then of course begin planning for our next gathering in 2018. But between now and then, uh, we hope that the connections you've made uh, bear fruit and that you stay in touch with us and with each other and that we genuinely create this global network of Pearl S. Buck fans and scholars and readers um, and that we'll all gather again together in about two years. Thank you all very much for coming and we look forward to seeing you again soon. <laughs>